Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Racing Robots. This is a new game from Brett Sobel and Seth Van Orden published by Nebu Games. It plays from 1 to 6 players in 75 minutes. Racing Robots, this is a review copy that we got sent from the publisher. Thank you so much for letting us play your game and today we're going to tell you if you should play the game, if you should go out, run to the store or maybe just walk or maybe kind of crawl into the store so that it's a uh, so my kind of that's my new thing run yes. walk or crawl okay like because <laughs> what is the worst people on 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 like youtube videos like like this is youtube video i don't know why i like compare this to a youtube video video games is kind of like buy rent or skip, Try, that skip. Loud, something like something. that i just started taking Norwegian in there uh but uh, but mine is run walk or crawl I would say like a click is also an option if you're buying click. it online. No, no, because like you're running, you need to get it fast. Okay. You're walking, you're gonna buy it. Okay. And when you're crawling, you're waiting for it to be on sale. Okay. Because if you're very, very late, Things it might be, be sold sale. out or it might be on sale. Cool. If it's, so that's my okay. new system. I don't know how long it will work. Probably zero videos. Today, Racing Robots. Racing Robots is a game, engine building, tableau building game where you are racing robots. You are playing a kid version of very well-known inventors and people like that uh, and you are playing a kid version of them. It's pretty weird, cute and creepy, especially some of them, uh, to race robots. You are playing robots onto your board. You're trying to activate the roles. You're going to choose which faces of the five faces you're going to choose each round. Mm, sometimes you get some help from the other players so that you can do a better face or you can do a different face. Um, a little first version of that face and stuff like that but most of the time you're gonna activate your robots your roles to try to score points to try to get resources so you can play more robots so you can score more points like an engine building game let's briefly talk through the five phases of the game the first one is the upgrade phase where you pay resources to upgrade your actions then you have the assemble phase where you pay resources to build your robots and then you have the design fabricate and recycle phases which works in the same way yes where you see how much energy you have and you activate your robots and your abilities up to that amount of energy yeah so with that you know exactly all the stuff about the games let's talk about the things that we played and, and thought and stuff like that but first we play the game, we look at us with our eyes, and we have an expert on ice. Finally back in the studio, like every time. She's here! <laughs> Yay! Yay! I'm the expert on ice, and I want to tell you, this game looks amazing. Like, all cards has these unique, cute robots. They're so unique and cool and, cute. and thematic. <laughs> <laughs> and so unique. But they look like something out of a child's mind. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, you have imagined like a, a serial making robot and it looks kind of like a child would make that robot, which ki kind of is the, the theme of the game. But um, I think it's so cool to sit on my turn and look at the different robots in mm -hmm. my hand. And they have so cool names as well. So you get to do that while you're playing with the downtime with four people. Uh, but yeah, the, the game has, and, and as I said, like the names. Like it's a really fun, like you see the name and you see the robots. Like, oh, that makes sense. That's yes. super good. I think the quality components are good. I we agree. have like some of the deluxe stuff, so some of the pictures you will see these uh, wooden pieces uh, and those are going to be cardboard in the normal version. I like the upgraded stuff, but it's not like it's needed no, to play the all. game. Mm, the rule book, there is a rule book, it looks like this, it is pretty long. It is, there's no pages, yeah, it's 28 pages long, uh, but it does have the, it does have the two player rules, the solo rules, it, it has a great thing, summary on the back, love which it. I love. And also like an icon index, like it has a summer up here and the icon index, which is really, really good. It is a pretty decent rule book. It has big, big examples, big letters. So it's not, even though it's a bigger rule book, it's not that hard to get through it. Most of the game is pretty straightforward. Like there's not many things that to trip you out. There was one thing that I had a problem with understanding, which was like the way that the energy, amount of energy you had worked. Like, for example, you didn't, you spend it there, but you don't spend it there. Here you can split it, here you can't split it. But it doesn't really make sense that you can't split it here because it wouldn't make any sense because you are doing this and this. So it's, it's a couple of those things that, that tripped my brain out. But other than that, very simple, straightforward. There's a separate uh, page for the inventors, which I think is good because when you get in the beginning, you're going to get two inventors. And then it's not to have like a cheat to look at them. You don't have to send the rule book around, which I really, really like. 
And this, uh, there is no player aid? Yes, no, they, there isn't, but yes. um, some of the, the things are explained on your player board. Mm -hmm. And I also love that the faces you you are supposed to or like recommended to move your uh, meeple, inventor, meeple, inventor yeah. in, in the, the order of the, the faces, which I really enjoy. Oh, yeah, I think you should do that, especially yes. when you have like many cards to activate and stuff like that. Yes. And also the whole, basically, you only need one of these. You're going to do this and you're going to have the whole thing in front of you. Perfect. Uh, we played the game, as I already said, we played yes. with two and four people, and it took minutes. Yes, with four players, that was a learning game. So mm -hmm. it took us two hours, which we felt like was a bit long. And with Way two players, long. it's uh, one hour, um, like more or less. I yep. feel like that is a really nice time yes. to play this game. At. And I, in most of the game um, like goes simultaneously, yes. everything really. So yeah. if you if you play with not very AP prone players, mm -hmm. you can play this game with up to six players. Yeah, but you should know if you play with six that you either you know you're the slow player or you know that there's no slow players because it's gonna it's gonna be somebody slower than the others. And I if I'm six people, this is just me. If mm -hmm. I'm six people to play a game, I would either split it into two trees. Or I would play something which has interaction. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk more about that, but this, for me, it's not a six-player game. This no, is... but I think that in these kind of games, when mm -hmm. you do things simultaneously and there is limited player interaction, this mm -hmm. is one of the games that you could play with six players. And I, I'm happy that they've included enough components to do it. Yeah, so if you are interested in doing that, you can do it. Let's talk about the game. Yes. The game, it's impossible to talk about this game without mentioning two other games. Mm -hmm. And those are Race for the Galaxy yes. or basically every, any game where you choose a face, like everybody's choosing faces. It's different than Race for the Galaxy, but it's kind of even that kind of feeling. And also it's impossible to not talk about Wingspan or yes. Wormspan, which is the new one now. Um, because you have a board with three rows of different cards. You will play cards in them and you will activate the cards. Sounds familiar to Wingspan, so it's going to be hard to to talk about this. I mean, we're not really going to compare it to Wingspan because they are they are different. Like, there's different yes, games. Yes, that is the only yes. similarity. It stops there and it, also the activation doesn't feel exactly the same. It no. feels very different also, but absolutely that is that is one thing that I can see the similarities with another game. Mm -hmm. And also, as you said, Race for the Galaxy. I love this mechanism in this game mm -hmm. in general, that you're playing cards with faces and you're trying to deduce what the others will pick yeah. and also see if you can squeeze out some extra actions, basically. Yeah. Because the, be the beginning of the round, you are drawing two energy cards. Then we're going to show you a number of energy. And the more energy is usually always better. Yes. Like there's no actions that are like, oh, you should have one and not four energy. Because then you can also do the thing where you have one. So more energy is always better. You Everybody's going to have the same deck of cards. You're going to shuffle them up so you're not going to get the cards in the same order. You're going to flip two and it's going to show you, okay, so I'm going to have uh, four energy and I'm going to have an energy cube, for example. And then on those two cards, I'm going to choose a face. I'm going to play them face down and everybody's going to flip their faces. <laughs> You're going to flip your face. <laughs> You're going to flip their faces up. And then if you have one of those big energy cubes, those are coming to a board on the middle of the board. A little board in the middle of the table where you have the faces on them. And that's going to basically be worth one energy for all the players for that face. So that means that, for example, in my example, I had already had a four. That means that this is now a five energy action. But let's say Sunima didn't have anything on that. They didn't choose that. She can now do that face as well in with one energy. And there are ways you use batteries to upgrade the amount of energy you take. And then you are going to do the faces. Uh, and you, are, you have to do them in order. So you cannot like, oh, but no, I got this one. So I can skip that and go back. Um, I think like this is the only interaction part of the game. Yes, I agree, but I think it's a cool interaction part of the mm -hmm. game. I feel like sometimes I really want you to choose an action that yes. I don't choose, so that I can do three different actions and I have enough of batteries to boost that mm -hmm. action, for example. Or I hope that, okay, I don't have the energy to build that robot, but if you also choose the same action, mm -hmm. then I will have enough energy without using my batteries, for example. And it's kind of like a risk reward thing. Like you can yeah. say like, okay, I want to do this too, but you have focused very hard on that row. So maybe you're going to choose that action. So then I going to do the other action. And it's not like a crisis if you don't choose it, but it can be very good for me if you choose it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like, yay or no. Yes. And also it only helps if you choose it, if you choose it on the one which has the energy cubes on it. Yes. So, <laughs> and I also have to say like in two players, you're using a dummy player. 
basically it's not really a demo player it's basically just like a way to to deliver these energy cubes yeah, a little simulate bit more. other people choosing the, those actions and it works really well yes i think it's a great way of doing it and also for me like i'm gonna say already like this is a two-player game for me because this works so well mm -hmm. i get that kind of guessing for two people i guess because you have all the five cards you're gonna have two of them face up two three face down and so no one know it's gonna be one of those three that is going to be one cube on. Mm -hmm. And next round is going to be two, and one of them is going to get a two cube, so I know it's going to be one of the two. So 50-50 chance, yeah. So you are kind of guessing. You might even have more information in a two-player version. Yeah. But I really like that. So for me, I think that this is like a two-player game because of that. How do you feel about that? I feel like this game with that kind of interaction could very easily be, be like, oh, I need three players or four mm -hmm, players mm -hmm. to get that interaction to be, be interesting. But I feel like this is a super two-player version mm -hmm. that simulates that. So I don't need three or four players to play this game and be very happy with that interaction. If you were three people, yeah. would you choose this game? Yeah. Yeah. So you would four people would you choose yeah. this game? You would five. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried it with five. If but all you, players were fast, yeah. yeah, I would play this game. The fun. thing for me, and this is, I've, we have actually played quite a few of these like simultaneous interaction or simultaneous action games uh, recently. I don't know why, uh, because it's not a, a thing I usually like, and and that's probably one of the reasons for me it's a two-player game mm -hmm. because I can kind of have a feeling of what you're doing. Like look at the board. Oh, you did these things. That makes yeah. sense. But then there's like four people. It, I'm just doing my own thing and yeah. I, I love multiplayer story there but I love to have like something like in Costa Burgundy you draft in the tiles all of this is my you can't stop this but there is you some can't you me. can't stop this but there is some like reason and I'm saying you know reason to be more than two people yes and uh, so for me a two-player game and you also say that you could play it no but I think like the energy cards is really cool mm -hmm. I think the actions work nice that is the as you said the interaction elements of mm -hmm. this game but I also think like the this solitary puzzle is really fun first of all this this game is very tight on resources oh yeah always mm -hmm. and I love that for some of the actions you can use cards that you don't need as resources yes that because you need resources and you always have too little energy and you mm -hmm. always have like one tape too little or Those whatever are, it is like uh, jokers <laughs> jokers yes and uh, as you said like you have to do the actions in order mm -hmm. so even though that robot that i'm going to activate later will give me the resources i need mm -hmm. i need them for this phase that i'm doing right now so i yeah. can't have it and um, i think it's a really cool puzzle as well yeah i feel like and this is kind of like the same in wingspan if you get a starting hand of robots which has a high cost and are hard to get out it's going to be harder to get the game going because you need that kind of engine in wingspan as well i didn't i wasn't supposed to compare them but it, it's Twice. kind of the same but it's kind of the same feeling uh, the great thing here is that you get to play two robots from your hand for free at the beginning of the yes. game so you get like you can choose kind of your engine i feel like that is an important decision because i chose something the first one of the like the second or third game we played i don't remember where i was like oh yeah that's horrible it's going to take me a long time to get going so it has some of that luck we're going to talk more about the luck later um i'm going to say one thing yeah this game is full of symbols this game has so much iconography it's great iconography yes but the first time you play and that's probably why it took two hours the first time with two or four people so don't take that like as a norm for four people i you are getting like okay so this is yeah. doing that like the the feeling in my brain from the first time to the second was this is very very hard and this is taking all my brain power and second was like walking in the park yes. and just having fun playing <laughs> some cars and looking at them run uh I did, they didn't run they just had to run uh, but yeah I, I i so i feel like the the first time if you play this the first time don't give up Yes, I agree, absolutely. And you start the game by drafting scoring cards and some starting robots mm -hmm. and the inventor power that you are going to play with the entire game. Yes. So that can be overwhelming for first time oh, players. Yeah. But when you play two, three and four and plus times, I really appreciate having these drafting possibilities to mm -hmm. give myself a direction in the beginning of the game. Yes. One element I really like about this game is upgrading the cards. Yeah. You have the, all the robots can be, most of the robots, I don't, I think all, yeah. can be upgraded to either have like a cheaper uh, energy cost or a better action or both, or like a higher energy cost and a better action, like all of these things. But also you have these final scoring cards, which you can basically cheat because they have, they're tired. So like, let's say I want to have, I have a scoring card that says, says give me 
mm, have five robots in this row, five of all the robots in this row. And, and then let's say I only have three, but I can put one of these specific upgrades on it. And now I have four. Yeah, I love that as well. It, it takes away some of the randomness as well mm. for getting, for example, an scoring card that you think, oh, it, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. You can then prioritize um, upgrading um, so you can have that symbol that you need. Uh, sure, let's talk a bit about luck. Yes. What do you feel about the luck level in this game? The luck is absolutely a factor in this mm -hmm. game and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Uh, when you're drawing s cards, um, there is going to be luck in the game. And mm -hmm. I don't mind the luck in this game, but but it's definitely there. I think the biggest, biggest problem, not problem, but like the, I, I'm not a big fan of luck. And, uh, and it's fun when you get the cards that are great. And it's not fun when you don't get the cards that are great. But you're going to draw quite a few cards mm -hmm. if you're not going for a strategy with a very low card draw. And then you choose that yourself. Uh, but you, as always, when you are late in the game, drawing final scoring cards, yeah. you could randomly get 13 points or you can get zero. Yes. And some of the scoring cards are simpler than the others. It felt like that. Uh, absolutely. Um, Except for last time where you had like a super uh, resource strategy. Yes. Because uh, I felt like the resource scorings were really hard, like almost impossible. Mm -hmm. But then I tried one time going heavy for it, yeah. and it actually was a viable thing to do. But yeah. you have to go for it. Yeah, but you also have to get the cards that lets you go for it, which yes. is kind of the the thing when you are getting in the beginning of the game. You get this. Oh, I'm going to try to have the first time play. I was like, oh, having 28 resources, that doesn't sound too hard. It's hard. <laughs> Never played it before. And I was like, oh, I have one resource after the first round. There's seven There's rounds so more. And tight on resources, just, always. Yeah. If you don't get the cards, that lets you get many resources. Yeah. Uh, other than that, like the inventor, the inventors, mm -hmm. they have some cool uh, abilities. They're, yeah. they're tired into like easy, medium, and hard. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel like all of them were as good. No, it, some of them has a one-time ability and sometimes ha some has an ongoing ability. Mm -hmm. And I feel like s some of the abilities were like always usable and always good. And some were more specific, so a little yeah. harder to utilize. And that kind of... So again, in a specific situation, if you end up with, for example, specific cards, the one I played with the last time, it would have been really good if I got a specific card that would make him really good. But you played with one that was just good every round like yeah. it was just giving you stuff all the time yes, without please, changing you. stuff and without making it any harder to play but it is a variant where you bid for inventions yes. inventors, inventors right so if you uh, are a group that is very um, think this is important yeah. yes with balancing everything um, it, or you play this a lot mm -hmm. you could absolutely play with that variant and I think that balances it out basically yes. because if you get these four and people know oh, that's going to be the best one mm -hmm. you're going to bid a lot to get that yes. one a really really great way of doing it Wait. Yeah. And who is it for? I think this is a medium game, uh -huh. um, but it feels like, um, even though I, I would say it is at the lighter, like end of medium. After the first time, like the yes. first time with the symbols, yes. makes it feel really <laughs> brain burning. Yes, absolutely. And who do you think will like it? Who is it for? Hmm. People who like board games. I think that uh, you um, you have to be okay with the randomness in this yes. game. But, Every real game you're but it calls. is a tight game with a lot of crunchy decisions mm. yeah. and a lot of meaningful ones as well. And the game, because you're doing two phases, mm -hmm. sometimes more, when it's your turn. And it's like eight rounds. Yeah. So the game is, you don't get to do everything that you want no. to. So it feels very like rewarding coming back for more. I agree, and I, just to, to mention on the luck, I don't think there's a lot more luck here than in other games where you draw cards from a deck of cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no display here, uh, because you're doing things at the same time, basically. Yes. So, final thoughts time. But before that, if you are here and you enjoy what we do and you've got anything out of this video, then you can help us out in a very big way by giving us a victory point. And we get victory points when you click the subscribe button, and you can also click the bell to get notifications every time we post a new video. And this is going to be the end? No, it's not. It's going to be no, final yes. thoughts. Let's do the final thoughts Let's first. Let's do the final before thoughts we before we end the, the video, video please. <laughs> I really like this game. Uh -huh. uh, I, I think... Um, 
I don't know how much the theme like <laughs> elevates it. Yes, because I really love the theme mm -hmm. and I love the cards and I love all the quirky, cool, cute robots. I think they're awesome. Yeah. But overall, I think it's a super cool puzzle. I l like the the choosing of the faces, mm -hmm. like trying to see what the other players are doing and trying to mitigate the risk and reward for maybe I will choose to do a different thing because mm -hmm. what people or the 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 dummy player is is doing and and I also think the solitary puzzle is cool there will be variability because you're playing with you a lot of the game is having these different robots on your hand and activating their abilities. Mm -hmm. So it, the game will feel different depending on what robots you get. Yep. And um, but I think this is a really cool game. I'm going to give it an eight. It's great. It's You're great. You're gonna give it an eight. I like it. I think it's a good game. I enjoy my time playing it. Um, it's it might not be one that I'm gonna like be really trying to play often but it's one that i would like to keep yes. do you agree with yeah, that yeah keeping it i uh, keeping it yes <laughs> i really i really think it's fun i for the reason we spoke about i i i think the interaction like basically i agree with you i feel like the the playing on the robots is fun trying to activate them trying to make the best of what you have it's a tactical game uh, if you want to, you can go for heavy card drawing, try to draw all the cards so that you have a better chance of getting the cards that will be better for your strategy. There is some frustration with some of the inventors feeling like worse, but then you can bid for them. Many great things. I think for me it's going to land on a 7.5. Cool. I think it's a fun game. Not amazing, but great. Almost great. It's not an 8, but it's almost, almost great. great. So that's going to be the end. That is actually going to be the end for this <laughs> video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.